What you haven't seen is some bins. No, not not the bins. Or or all the scrap. But So, we've marked out where we think everything is going to be, as best we can, where to dig, where all the track and points are going to be laid out. This one's currently measuring everything, because inevitably all this uh, marking spray is going to wear off. But uh, the next thing to do, well, is dig. So, we've made a bit of a mess, but the whole purpose of this section that we've dug down here is Nick to make is a path ish. More of an area to steam up in. You see, this section right here is the station for this far end loop, and the idea is to dig this area down as much as we can because we're running into the tree roots <laughs> and then that raises the height when you're steaming up at but as you get further round then the ground level comes up and then we're not having to build as big a wall and the slope section of the railway will appear so it's a start there's still plenty to go but uh, that's it for today isn't it we're losing the light and it's getting cold so that's, that's it for plenty. today. So it's a Sunday morning after Peterborough. We're both probably a bit knackered, but Very. we are here to do some more digging or sort of. But let's give an update of where we're at because in the mad rush to get sorted for Peterborough, we didn't really film much else. So let's go through what we've got. So we'll start at what's going to be the quarry at this end. So for the minute, path stayed in just to make our lives easier, but it is going to shift across. But roughly in this area will be the quarry. So we've dug down here for the foundation and it's got a wider patch. So the quarry itself will be sat on concrete blocks down to the foundation, much like the rest of the track bed. And then it follows the track bed round with a foundation. The next foundation that we're digging today is this one at the back here, which can be higher level because it's going to be hidden and that's just for the concrete blocks because what I'm stood on here is the new station that's going in so this will be three tracks across is what we're hoping and then around the corner the other side of this path the other side of this path is a retaining wall to the garden so that this path can be lower which probably needs to have a little bit to thicker foundation which we need to dig out today and we need to get it down to the same level as the one for the station. And then the path is in place, we've smoothed out the ground levels up into the garden so you can go either way. How do we get all the levels and how are we going to get the levels for the whole garden? The trick is this laser level. And what we've done is we've positioned it that the height of the track level is going to be at. There's a screw in the fence, set at the right height that it clips onto. There's then another screw set which is actually on the laser line just to confirm that when we've sat this in that it matches up. And all the way down the garden there's different positions to have it hooked onto and that means we can get a line all the way down the garden 
and this line is the loop of the the main running line so it's not the branch line and um, that we're going to go off but it's to get both loops in this back garden the same level and then what we then use is a nice straight edge which we put down the floor and it gives us our measurement to the track bed so using this and a little bit of mass we can then work out the height that the foundation needs to be dug down to for your foundation layer which is going to be 100 mil plus number of bricks and blocks up to the track bed so if we position this over at this point you can see we need to be around a metre uh, with the, including the foundation here which we've got so we can just keep digging out putting the straight edge in and confirming we're at the right height all the way along so then to get our foundation nice and flat we've installed these pegs strategic points when we're on a straight it'll be all easy we can have less pegs in but on corners like this we need a few and the idea is that these pegs have been banged in at the height of the top of the foundation so when we pull the concrete we can bring it up to that level and then using a bit of wood not this bit of wood we'll need a bit a bit longer and a level you can then sit it on there and pack your concrete down to that level and make sure you've got this base level because if you can get your foundation level then when you wall you start walling up from there you can just keep it all level and you don't have to compensate for not having a perfect foundation so, so what you'll notice in a lot of our shots is we've got these two sticks in the ground two broom handles these are our two centre points for the radius of this loop and we've put them in now uh, when we first lay the track out and everything that we're digging around is based off these two points so going back to a pretty basic system of string with knots is we know the different radiuses that we need for the different knots and we're then going to lay it down and make sure that we're following that path as we go around and that's how we've made sure we've got the radius you have straight between the two and then the radius round the station is a little bit trickier because at this point we've got some points that are spreading out so that you can get the three tracks in but obviously your points can't follow the same radius unless you have um, curved points so at this point here we've laid out the points that uh, are going to be in this position give us an idea of how far we're coming out but we're just going to make sure that this whole station is big enough for whatever we do because then we can put platforms in between and we can make it work how we want to so we've allowed ourselves plenty of room here the running line will be the inside of the loop track so that you can see up on the outside and that means this running line has to maintain that four foot radius including the points that are coming into it so again, we've given ourselves plenty of room to get four foot radius from both ends of it. So at this end of the station, we've got to have a think of how we're gonna lay the walls out. Because this wall right here, which is station wall, your track level's about this high. And it's obviously gonna head off and onto the slope as it heads down the garden at that same height but the ground level behind us is a lot higher and this is where we're going to start our hillside slope down so we need this wall right here to retain some soil here from the hole that we're currently stood in where you're going to be steaming up from and round to here now we could have done a straight wall but it doesn't quite fit with the layout of the track it just wouldn't look right somehow and trying to get all the gradients down to it I don't think would work so the plan is to have this as a curved wall around to return behind you but then to do that we've got to start at this track level 
and as we go round the corner and the track heads off further away from the wall, we'll be able to slope the ground level down to it and step it down so that when we get round to this side and the slopes here, it's continuing to step round and I'd expect around here somewhere for the wall then to be flush with the garden. So, bit of an update. There's been a development. Uh, we we now have walls, if the uh, camera wants to adjust. There we go. And uh, well, quite significant walls actually. So, it's kind of I'll try and give a bit of a tour. But basically, this is the main loop, the, what we're calling the quarry loop, and. Uh, it's going to have the steam up area, if I reverse, um, which will be here when the other wall's built. And actually, if Rob comes along, that will kind of be where you steam up. So it's quite a nice height. Yeah. You'll notice there's a lot of, well, wall ties stuck out. The further around the wall. Anybody for ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> further around the wall, there's uh, just standard wall ties put in because at this point we'll have the uh, the bricks, which is what we're going to wall next round, and that's a standard sort of cavity size. We've built it as a cavity because it's going to provide the strongest uh, wall, that's why we build it like that, and for around this section it actually gives us a nice base to put the track on. The only problem is when we get into the station area, obviously your cavity is going to be a lot wider to get the three tracks that we want in, plus some uh, station platform buildings, things like that, we've, we've made it wide enough so we can do what we want. So at this point we've actually made our own custom wall ties out of a bit of fencing wire, which is a system that we used at uh, Southgate as well. We did the same thing at the original Southgate. Um, to wherever the walls are too wide and this will be the same system as used around the rest of the railway we hope to try and use the pre-built ones as much as possible because it saves us building them um, but yeah that keeps the two walls tied together once we've walled the bricks which is the next job to be done around this section we then need to infill this part of it with rubble um, that braces the two walls off to each other the ties keep pull it stop it pulling apart, the rubble stops it pushing in and then that will be concreted on top to provide our, our platform base um, and similar around the other the other sides as well and then we can infill the middle um, again with as much rubble as we can to raise the level up and then we're going to mound the top of it uh, with the soil that we dug out and obviously we then need to build a little base for the quarry that's going in this corner which is what this larger section of concrete uh, foundation has been put in for. So again we'll wall some blocks once we've probably done this next section on in here and then all the quarry and everything will be sat on that base. So this all goes back to the idea that whatever we, whatever track is sat on, that is sat all the way back down to the foundation. Um, or at least mostly anyway. There'll be some bits that, that span between two walls, but it should always be sat on that foundation so it can't drop anywhere unless this base foundation drops. And if that drops, well, we've we bigger issues because it's like a foundation for a house, it shouldn't go anywhere. So, uh, so yeah, we've progressed pretty fast. I say we've progressed. I have to admit. Yes. We haven't done any of this. Well, I've, I've helped a bit. You have helped a bit. Yeah. I helped a bit. It mainly has been my dad, who has been out while I've been working. Uh, normally, then I've come home and just helped him finish off. That has come 
during this week and walled sections of it round. Um, once we've got the foundation in, he could then just come and do a bit of walling. So, uh, so yeah, so a big thank you to him for doing that uh, to get us to this stage. So, a bit of a wall update. Uh, we now have bricks as well as blocks and uh, a nice curve going on. Try and show it. Now the, the blocks are the height the track's going to be. So we've got a bit of a way to go yet, but it's a start. And an awful lot of hardcore needed for the infill. But we've had a former to make the nice curve around here. And these are all half bricks end on. And the curve actually goes all the way around here. And then straight up here. We haven't got the full loop yet because uh, that involves more trenches. But we're getting there. So bricks. So another bit of an update. The brick wall is now getting filled up. And Rob's digging more trenches. We're heading that way. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, definitely heading all along there. But the most important bit is that the the loop. We can now do the foundations for the loop. Path so has moved. The path. Yeah, that's true. Path has moved. Uh, it's, it's just a temporary path. Temporary path. To uh, it relay, goes. All the way around that here, but it's about where it's meant to be. Uh, but yes, we have started to fill in the massive enclosure, as it currently looks. This is all yeah. basically donations from people at the minute of rubble and hardcore. And a bit of it from ourselves. A little bit from us, bit but from us. mostly other bit. people's. Yeah, plan is to get it up to the second course of breeze block, up to that level, put um, weed membrane down, suppression membrane down, so that then the soil can go on top, it doesn't all filter through the stones and just disappear, with the brick and rubble and everything, but it means we're not having to use as much soil because we want this loop to mound up in the middle, um, basically to be like a mound, like a hill. When your loco runs round, it's going to disappear around the back. It's just, it's going to look nice. That's the idea. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we've got to mound it up. Obviously, the quarry's got to go in the corner, so we don't want to go too far. That's about as far as I'm going with the with the infill, um, because we need to wall some blocks onto this and then pack some rubble around it. So we'll keep some back for that. But we want to put some in here. What we've got to be careful of is if we put too much in before we've got the walls up on the outside then it will push this block wall over we don't want to fill this up, put all the soil on top and all the walls fall out it's a, uh, it's a bit you know, do a bit on the outside, a bit on the inside so you'll see down the station area we've packed that as well in effectively the, the large cavity so now the wall ties are keeping the two walls together in, uh, in tension and the rubbles pushing them apart so this section of the wall then is braced all the way across to that one makes it nice and strong obviously as you get further round it's not as strong with it being so close so you'll notice we're stacking stuff around the outside and that's effectively to like um, widen the walls make them stronger on the outside when we get into the middle here it will more just be uh, not quite tipped but looser place yeah it's just dumped in um, basically but yeah all all this one around here and, and below this section here is all sort of vaguely walled to strengthen it as much as possible so yeah so plan for today is more infill in this oh we have a lot been yes donated from various people it's it's surprising i've we, been we, slightly we inundated <laughs> and it just it, it went in there and it hasn't filled it that much so it's surprising how much it's going to need but there we go 
And then the other job is to set up the, dig out the foundations for this next section. So I'm currently working on the block that's going to come round from the station. And this one's tucking in more to that curve so that when the track comes round, the track at the back is probably not going to be on this block, but obviously it's on the infill. But as it gets to this point here, I don't want the rubble infill here or on this section here. This is going to be soil so we can plant some stuff. So the track's going to be sat on the breeze block wall, the brick wall curved on the inside, again with the ties across. And then we get to this point here and it's going to join the other one that's coming down here. And then from that point on then, up to here, we are just freeze block brick, brick at this side, so it's a bit of a weird combination bit here where the two sides are meeting. And then from this point on here, we're splitting again, so the brick wall's staying down the back, down the path, and the breeze block is going to follow the track line. So you'll see all the way down here, the brick walls basically somewhere there. The breeze block at this point is all the way over here, which is the passing loop. So you've got the two tracks. And we've got a nice big hillside behind it and the one leading up to it. All the way down, tunnel mouth, and then we get into the other loop, the stone section, which we're a bit off yet. Yeah, but that, if we that's can get currently down here, just that's... a pile of soil. Yeah. So all that has to go back down the garden to that end <laughs> once all the rubble's in. And some of it will go against the the uh, the hillside as well when we get that far. But you'll see the path needs to be levelled. Yeah, it doesn't really show here. up on the camera but it's not level at the minute. Yeah. We've got, we've got so, a bit of garden left so still. The, the path will come up quite a bit and so actually although that section of the, the line looks quite tall uh, I can't see uh, where you're pointing. Yeah, so the loop obviously looks quite tall. But this section, if I grab my measuring stick, the line is currently there at this point. And this path needs to come up, so when you actually compare it to a section here where the path is about the level we want it at. And we'll just stick that in there. The track is now down here. So you'll see from all that section down there, it's going to be a lot lower. So you're not going to be servicing it from this side because this is just the scenic area. So it doesn't matter that it's lower. But it means when we get down to the far end, you can step over it. And you don't have to go up as many steps to get over yeah. it. So that's the plan. Cool. If the weather stays fine. Meant to today, tomorrow definitely Tomorrow's sketchy. not great. <laughs> Monday, because it's bank holiday now, May bank holiday, um, is meant to be good, so hopefully we can get some more walling done on Monday. But today it's infill, foundations, and weather watching. <laughs> yep. So let's, let's get to it. Sounds good. So, foundations have been cast. So we've carried on from where we left off before, which is the quarry section, and worked our way that way. And what you'll see is when we cast the foundations, we score in where we're going to build, or where the track is. So the line that's following around here is the track line. This one's the one going to the quarry, which is, as you can see, it's scratched a few times because this one's a little bit exactly where it's going we're not 100% sure but it gives us an idea and then we've actually scored in where the blocks are which is what we're going to wall next so we're going to do a bit of a jog here to uh, support the base of the quarry come out and back down so that then by this point here we're back with a cavity but our cavity at this point is quite small because we're only supporting one track down here and the plan uh, was to only have one track down this section but we might actually squeeze two in now um, looking at how we've walled it and everything, we'll probably fit two down there. But we'll work that out later. And you can see we've got another wall coming back down to meet up with this one. And this is to support the track 
that uh, will be coming off the main line and allow you to just go round this loop if you want to, so you can do another circuit of it. So we come across. This section here is where it gets a little bit complicated. So if I come down, you have the one track heading off down throughout the line. This is where the three tracks come into the station. So this section from this wall here, which we're going to wall to this bit here, is all we're going to be filling with rubble. And this wall here is going to curve round. So this is going to be up at the, the height round. And this gets us into the first extension of this railway that we put on and we haven't even finished it yet. Or even got close to finishing it, but we put an extension in. The other thing you'll notice, we are filling up this section. I think I may have to just sort of put some names on the screen of the people yeah. who have donated <laughs> rubble. Donated rubble. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is filling up, so it's a little bit maybe high in the middle at the minute. I might just lower it down, but some of these are going to go into this wall once we've built up the brick on the outside. This is what asking for donations from local people and a morning does. <laughs> we, we, we do need quite a lot in this section. We do. <laughs> but we're going to get it up to the level back here. You'll see I've just put a little bit of soil in. And the plan then is to put um, weed suppression material in, soil on top, and bank it up. We've left these markers in just ease of our track um, lane. They might get cut off, but also the soil might actually come up to this point. Because I've got to get it up high enough that this um, quarry face makes sense that you're into a hillside so it's got to go up so it will be quite high uh, with soil but that means we can plant things in it and, and it'll mean that the line disappears behind the bank so next steps um, so this is basically it for this weekend but next steps this week will be to wall the blocks uh, down this section complete this round um, loop and then we can fill in this last little bit with a wall and start doing more bricklaying around the outside and then we'll have a loop of track. Yeah well hopefully your dad is coming tomorrow to do a bit yep. more walling so yep. this should complete the loop in theory. Yeah weather dependent. Weather dependent. As always <laughs> weather dependent. <laughs> Typical Yorkshire weather yes. <laughs> but we've been pretty lucky so far. So we've started to dig down this way down the garden as well. Uh, we've not quite got the foundations dug perfectly yet, but we're starting to. You see at this point, we're splitting the line. So the line's heading off in the front here. The brick wall's following roughly where the path is, uh, where this marker peg is, down there. And that allows us then to get our bank. So the soil will come up, up to the track level, up and to the wall so that you can have the uh, planting and everything down the back of it and you've got that scenic view. Obviously at this point we've got the passing loop down here. These pegs are showing the line of the wall sort of, but the wall's going to be this side of them. We're just putting them in so we knew the spacing for the path. And then we come down here and that so that wall's roughly straight but then at this point here we transition and we go into stone and then it's going to change a little bit around this corner um, but we'll come on to that later the bridge however is something we've been trying to put in somewhere so these are the old SLR bridges that should be another one hopefully used down there and we're hoping to put it in here it's a little bit tight um, looking at the plan but we're hoping to get it between two points this point here going off to the uh, blocked up tunnel mouth and the passing loop and this point here which is the one for the loop so one track heading sort of straightish with a bit of a bend in it which is where the steps are going to come over and then the other track will come round here to complete the loop so if we can get it in here what it means is that this brick wall can end here and it's a sort of natural end for it and our stone can start here and we can actually leave a gap and this gap's big enough for a wheelbarrow and the hope is that if we we won't make this necessarily removable, but we can remove it if we need it out and we can wheel a wheelbarrow in if we ever want to extend in this sort of area. 
you just got to think about things like that. So, yeah, that gets us to this end, which we'll come on to at some point in the future when we finish once that. Once all end. that soil's gone. Yes, once that soil that I've shifted down to this end of the garden gets goes shifted back down the other end. All the way down to that end again. Yes. But we put it at this end for anybody that's asking that question. Somebody's bound to. Why didn't you put it next to it? Well, if we did that, it'd kill all the grass off. We're not fussed about the grass at this end because we're going to be digging this up anyway. So that's the reason why I've carted it to one end to cart it back. Well, it is episode two, so uh, we did promise you something. Let's go have a look at what's this way. So you've seen the SLR shed, that is here. What you haven't seen is some bins. No, not, not the bins. Or, or, or the scrap. But there is a gap down the back of the shed. And that gap gives us a chance to come out here. The, the builder's yard as it is now. But it, it won't be. Because you see, if we come all the way down that gap, across the stone path that will be walled, down this edge, we can have another station out the front here, past the bricks that will be walled, to the original SLR loop, which when you see it here, it's absolutely tiny compared to the rest of the garden. It really is. <laughs> it's, it's quite, yeah, it really I does thought, show I, it. I used to think it was big. <laughs> it's not big. <laughs> so yeah, so the loop will be not in this position. It will be further that way, which will allow you then to get past it. But this will be the loop at the end of the branch. Although the branch all the way up to the station area will be on a four foot radius, which means you can run all the way up, run round in the run round uh, two tracks, because the two tracks are there. And then if you are able to, you can go around the loop and go back down if you want to be a lazy sod and not run round. But otherwise you can run round and head back down. So there is actually a rough plan of what we're going to do at the top here. And it is very rough, but the main reason we drew this was so that we could then work out all our levels. Because you'll notice we came up some steps. There will be a ramp eventually. I think it does show on the camera as well that it's um, yeah, it's not flat. That gives you an idea. So height-wise, we're going to be coming up off the stone loop, so where the pond is about 1 in 50 all the way around the seating area, up the back of the shed, all the way up to about here somewhere. So that'll all be 1 in 50. There might be some level sections in it just so that it's not all one big slope. Um, because we can actually get away with that. And then from here it'll be level again so that you run around loop and uh, I'm running around section for the station and the loop at the end here are all on level. What that will mean is the track is only going to be at this top section here, probably about here somewhere. It's not going to be very high, um, but what that enables us to do is you'll notice that it's a sort of triangle in the corner. It's tucked away in the corner here with the tracks going across the front, will be a seating area. Probably that bench, at least to start with. Yeah. Once and it's once it's cleaned up a bit. And you'll be able to just step over the tracks to sit on that. Probably a couple of sidings down the side of it, so you can put your stock in there when you finish your run. But yeah, it's not going to be very high, but that means we can step over it and, uh, and have a sit out. And that actually gets uh, a good portion of the sun round as well at the front here. Um, it's rising over there and setting over there. So, yeah, you'll look out across this area and uh, 
But that's all future-ish. Branch line, future-ish. Yeah. When we've got time, when we're not digging trenches or well, walling the, or... The rest of it definitely has to be built before uh, all of this lot can move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this <laughs> so, is currently the builder's yard, so... It's the only storage place Although, for you know, us. we could you know, put a hole through the bricks. Now you're just getting daft. Yeah. We wanted a tunnel. Just saying. Anyway, that's it for for now. I'm sure there'll be something else I'll come up with. Yes, like wanting to go across the drive. I said sod it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it.